This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of AMI. Alleluia Ministries International believes in the Bible and Christ. We are Christ-centered and Jesus is at the heart of everything we believe and do. Our mission is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Through this mission, we seek to empower believers and equip them with the tools to share the gospel with the world and to live a life of faith, hope and love in Christ. Jesus remains the same yesterday, today and forever. Just as it was in scripture, his power is at work today in the church. We are AMI. The very first of its kind, the arising of the prophetic voice, academically sound, theologically profound and prophetically accurate, a revolutionary framework for understanding the secrets behind the coming prophetic move of the Holy Spirit, a remarkable read written by Pastor El Foucault. The prophetic is the oldest and most documented ministry in the Bible, but remains misunderstood in our time. Both the world and the church have often shown resistance to this incredible ministry throughout the ages, yet it stands as one of the most powerful ministries of our Lord. The prophetic uniquely reveals the presence of God and demonstrates his power amongst the saints and the world at large. It is because of this reason that the devil fears this ministry's full operation. This book will provoke your spirit, confront every seed of confusion with regards to the prophetic, and activate in you the gift of God. Concealed between its profound pages are mysteries that were hidden from generations of old, but are to be revealed in this season. This book captures both the heart and the spirit of the reader. It is a sign that God is doing something new, something astounding, something beyond human comprehension, something that will educe a wealth of uncommon thirst for God. It is a new dawn. The revelation and knowledge contained in this book will give clear understanding of the prophetic and unleash its grace in the life of every reader. God is raising an army of prophetic men and women across the globe, men and women of power, who will align with his perfect will to do and to fulfill his kingdom assignments in a time such as this. It is the arising of the prophetic voice. Pastor Alf Lucao exhibits an uncustomary grace in the office of the prophetic, moving in rare precision and accuracy throughout his ministry. The world continues to bear witness to the distinct dimension of the prophetic mantle upon the man of God. Saints from across the globe are beneficiaries of this authentic, life-transforming gift that has proffered solutions in their lives. The book, originally written in English, is translated in various languages, namely Hindi, Mandarin, French, Spanish and Portuguese. Get your copy today from the Alleluia Ministries International Bookshop online through elflucar.com, Amazon or any Baobao outlet across the world. Here is a step-by-step -step guideline on how to make safe online payments to Alleluia Ministries International from any country around the globe using your computer, your laptop, your cell phone or any device of your choice. Let's begin. The first step would be to open your web browser. Type in www.alleluiaministries.com. This will lead you to Alleluia Ministries International's welcome page. Select the tab written Online Giving where you will find our three different payment options namely PayPal, NetBank, and lastly, credit card or debit card payment options. For payment via PayPal, click on the PayPal icon, which will redirect you to our PayPal payment page. Insert the amount you wish to transfer and click on the option Donate with PayPal or Donate with Credit Card. If you're paying with your credit card, fill in all your details, your credit card number, and click the box below to confirm that you've read all the information and finally click on Donate Now. For payments into our NetBank account, use only the banking details on Alleluia Ministries International's website. Our NetBank details are as follows. Account name, Alleluia Ministries International, NPC. Account number, 120-582-7692. Branch code, 197005. Swift code, NEDSZAJJ. Use your name and surname as reference, or use the purpose of your payment as reference. For example, tithes, seed offering, prophetic seed, 
IVP Accommodation, or TV Ministries. To donate using a credit card or debit card, fill in the information below in detail. Kindly note that payments will be deducted in South African rands. Once all information has been filled in correctly, agree to the terms and conditions by clicking the box on your bottom left corner. Proceed to click on Place Order. Once all payments are made, you will receive an email from Alleluia Ministries International confirming that your payment has been well received. These are our only payment options and you are advised to take extra caution. Thank you for your time and may God bless you as you send forth your seed. If you were blessed by this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can catch Pastor Avlok Howe on AMI TV on the public bouquet or on our live stream on AMITV.com. You can follow Pastor Avlok Howe on all social media platforms at Avlok Howe. Greetings, precious family of God. Greetings in this very precious season that we are in. Uh, we have been for 2,000 years and a bit more. The season of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You and I can exude the Zoe life of God because of the resurrection power of Christ and the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God who lives on the inside of us. We are powerful because He makes us powerful. He is all-powerful. I want to greet you uh, this uh, very beautiful afternoon coming to you live from our studios in Kelvin View in our main branch, our main church, the head office, Hallelujah Ministries International, right here. We call it our Jerusalem because it is the center of everything that we do. And I want to just bring you greetings uh, from the ministry team here, from media, from all of us here. We just count it a great joy to be able to come to you right there, either in your homes, you are probably in your office, you are probably probably just about to go to bed, but you take the time because you know that you are, especially on YouTube, you've hit the notification bell, and sometimes when you, when you get so busy, and that's what happens, life happens, you suddenly get a notification, oops, and then you know that you are connected. Having said that, if you are not connected via YouTube, may I make a, a very humble plea to you, it doesn't cost you anything at all. Would you do what is preferred by our ministry to be able to get onto YouTube and to be able to just uh, subscribe if you have not done so. Hit the notification bell and you can be sure to be privy to all of the uploads that is posted up on, on, on YouTube and also to hear and know uh, when ministry is live from the altar of Alleluia Ministries International. Having said that, we also want to greet our Facebook followers. I pray that you will do exactly what you know you need to do as the evangelist in this last harvest, the last time, to just share this live feed and bring people in to this precious moment. Today is a moment that you will want to get your family, your friends, your neighbors, your work colleagues, everybody that is in your contacts to connect them to this program today, especially on the rise of the prophetic voice. There is a word that the Holy Spirit has for each individual, for each family on the planet, earth, all over the world. God has a word for you. I believe that. And you do not want to have them miss out in this very precious time that we share and spend together. Uh, our AMI TV family, I know as always, you would gather the disciples around, you would gather the family around, especially leaders, would make sure that they would not miss this opportunity because this is part of their training to be able to uh, get the souls that we've won for the Lord, for them to be discipled, for them to be consolidated so they can stand firmer and stronger in the things of God so that when the winds and waves come and you are not there, they will know what they need to do in order to stand strong. So I greet you, uh, family of God, all of our pastors and ministers across the globe serving uh, this ministry in an official capacity uh, for 
the general overseer of this ministry, Pastor Alf Lukau, I bring you greetings. And it's a great joy to serve you from the altar of your father today. May the Lord bless you. So as you gather the family around, uh, we want to get straight into the word in about five minutes from now. But would you allow me to do first things first and give honor to the general overseer and senior pastor of Alleluia Ministries International, Apostle and Prophet Alf Lukau, my commander-in-chief, my daddy. Dad, I love you so much. I want to thank you for the joy that it is to serve you. And with every opportunity that you give me, I just get so excited to know that there is another opportunity that I, as your son, Rodney Joseph, has to learn on the ground in the assignment. Thank you, my father. You are, you are too gracious to allow me to sit on your altar. I love you. I have an immense amount of respect for you. And there is no other spiritual father in my life but you. Thank you, precious dad. My salute. Bishop Celeste, my beautiful mom, uh, every time we are in church and every time we speak, all I ever hear is Bishop Celeste, the beauty, the beauty of our ministry. And uh, I know that every time we utter these words in random uh, caucuses and in random meetings, the Lord is blessing you. So we want to just bless your life today one more time uh, from the altar of God. And I want to thank you so much for what you do for the ministry and what you do for dad, allowing him to be with us. And it was a great joy to see. I could imagine the joy in your heart, especially as mother, when A.J. Lukau took to the altar on Sunday to receive the offering. It was just amazing. And I could just imagine the joy that was in your heart. Well done, Mom. Well done. I love you so much, and I can't wait to see you soon. Would you please greet uh, the remaining household of the Lukau family for us uh, and for me, love and miss them. Well, family, today is uh, yet another splendid joy for me to be on the altar of my father with the one who brings me immense joy on a daily basis. I must say I'm not uh, the easiest one to look after in this journey of my life, but she does it with such grace and such humility and such strength from the Lord. So I'm here to share this moment with you in the word of the Lord on the rise of the prophetic voice with my, my sweetheart, my bestie, Pastor Videshna Joseph. Thank you, Pastor Rodney. Pastor V, the floor is yours. Thank you. That's just beautiful. Thank you. And together we will serve the Lord and we will lift up his name Amen. and we will just praise the name of Jesus every opportunity that we have. Amen. So family, I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the rise of the prophetic Thursday afternoon in South Africa. Uh, most of us are getting off work and I know that you would be getting ready and take away all the distractions from around you and sit and experience God's word because God's word is living, God's word is powerful and God's word is going to reach you at your point of your need right there in your homes so I just want to welcome you all around the world on all our platforms, all our social media platforms. I want to also welcome our disciples on AMI TV together for life, our beautiful disciples joining us once again. Welcome to the rise of the prophetic voice. And as you settle down, let us just honor the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who allows us to see the Son, which is Jesus. And you would never be able to see or to acknowledge or to experience, the, the, experience Jesus without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So we welcome you, Holy Spirit. You are my joy. You are my absolute love. I love you and I thank you that you are anointing touches me, your love touches me, your grace touches me every single day of my life. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you in Jesus. You are welcomed. You are the, you are the best 
best thing that has ever happened to me, and I just love you with all my heart. And we are still uh, 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 reminiscing of our resurrection day, and we are just blessed that we can just be on your screens once again. And for that, we have our greatest father to thank, our man of God, our shepherd, our covering. I was just telling somebody just now that you, my father, you, my dad, you have taught me to pray. You have taught me to go into the word of God. There have been times when I didn't know that I could do this, but you, my dad, that you have laid your hands upon me, that you have prayed over me in your time of prayer, on your knees praying for for me and for, for, for Pastor Rodney, being on in your prayer closet, worrying and, 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 and reaching God's throne rooms for me. And I just honor you, my Father. I just love you. I adore you, my man of God. There is nobody like you, nobody to reveal the word like you have, nobody to explain it to me the way I have. I have grown because you are my Father, Dad. You are my father, not, nobody, not one person can take credit for edifying me the way that you have. So I give glory to God for your life, my man of God. Because of you, I am a better person. Because of you, I can face, I can face battles and I come out victorious because you have taught me that I am victorious always. My man of God, my covering, my father, the general overseer of Alleluia Ministries, and my prophet, apostle and pastor Alf Luca, my dad, I just thank you for everything. And next to you is my beautiful mother, Bishop Celeste Lucal. My mother, you are just glorious in my eyes. You are just simply, I feel your prayers every single time I pray. I feel your love over me. I know that you are praying for me every single day. You have all of your children so close to your heart, and I just love you. Your children rise up. We call you blessed because you are blessed. So, Mom, wherever you are, receive the praises from your children. Receive the blessings that come from our mouth straight to Jesus, and it has your name upon it. You just receive it, Mom, because you deserve it. You deserve every good thing, every good thing that comes from our God. You deserve it, Mom, because you are our gift. You are my covering. You are my leader, and I love you. Bishop Celeste Lacal, I love you. And as the family of God, as you, you watch us for the next and, and enjoy our program and interact with us, our parents are online, so won't you just interact with our parents they are right there they are seeing your messages you just interact them i saw the other day there are stars you just you just click on that star button and you just send all your love to the ministry send the love to your parents kisses and hugs they receive all of that so family of god won't you just enjoy the next few uh, 30 minutes with us because it is going to thoroughly, thoroughly bless your hearts as we carry on with the journey of resurrection, because we are still basking into the resurrection power of our Lord. And that's, that's how we roll. That's how we roll, Pastor Roddy. That's how we roll. Uh, did you say you're going to speak for 30 minutes and I have, what, five? Yes, so I should just tell the media, she just block his mic. <laughs> We're going to minister together for the time that's available uh, for the rest of the time that we have together until six and Pastor V, you always make such valuable contribution both on air and off air and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Pastor thank you. Rodney. Thank you, thank woman you. of God. Well, family, today you would have seen that it's come up as a title for our program today, today on the rise of the prophetic voice, a lamb for a household. Now forget thinking about spit dry, forget thinking about dry place and barbecue if you are in the U.S. and that part of the world. I want, you to be, I want you to be spiritual. The Lord has been speaking to His servants under the anointing and the grace of our spiritual Father, and I know that this is His heartbeat. Since Monday, when we had the call, I immediately said to Pastor V, this is what the Lord is saying. 
and we had prepared accordingly. And may the Lord help us to be able to articulate and communicate His Word directly into your spirit. Amen. And may you take this Word today. Every ministry that happens on the rise of the prophetic is precious. And I pray that you will take today just as importantly and apply this word to you. Amen. A lamb for a household. When I open one of my Bibles today, Pastor V, I've got a, quite a few Bibles. And, and this particular one, I smiled when I said to you this in the morning when I opened it and I looked at our key scripture of Exodus chapter 12 from verses 3, I immediately saw that I highlighted the title, which I had already discussed with you and had given it, A Lamb for a Household. I said, well, the Lord is speaking, and that's exactly as, as He would have it. I, I, I really want us, family of God, to not rush past the season of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I really feel it in my, my spirit that we should not treat it as just an event and now we wait for the next important event. And the Lord has been dealing with my heart as I've been delving, deep diving into the word as to what are the essential components that the Lord left with the disciples and to others to perpetuate and further the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. And I've been just still digging deep into the word. And I'm being blessed and I'm being sufficiently challenged accordingly, excuse me. But let's get right into it. A Lamb for a Household is our title, which comes right at the end of verse number three. I want to read. This is uh, God speaking to Moses, his leader. He's saying to him, speak, I read from verse number three, speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, on the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household. We're moving on to verse number four and five. But God is speaking through Moses. He was preparing Moses and the people who were in slavery for the longest time, 430 years. And that God was about to deliver them. God was about to deliver his people, and that was the instruction. In verse 3, a lamb for a household. But verse number 4, I love this. And if the household is too small for the lamb, I'm speaking to families right now. I'm speaking to you. You have your, your, your immediate family made of father, mother, and children. And quite possibly in our culture, we look after our elderly parents. Or it could be you are looking after an older aunt or an uncle who is regarded as your parents. You probably have a nephew or a niece. Or you have adopted a child or children that are yours. I'm speaking to that family component. But I'm speaking to the head of that family mainly. Here it is. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house. Do you have a neighbor? I have a neighbor. I have quite a few. You, yes, you have a neighbor. If you don't have a neighbor, we'll get you one. Because this word is for you today. Let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons, according to each man's need, and you shall make your count for the lamb. Let's stop right there before we move a little bit further. Pastor V, we were talking about the ministry of Jesus. And we were talking about what the Lord expects us to continue since his coming three and a half years. And 
It was so beautiful when God was leading his people out. This was the 10th plague and he was preparing them and he said, take a lamb for every household and also consider your neighbor. If your neighbor does not come under that protection, would you reach out? The Lamb of God is Jesus Christ. Would you reach out to your neighbor that doesn't have a personal walk and relationship with Jesus? Bring them in. And moving a little bit further, just to the next verse, verse number five, speaking about a lamb for a household. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from goats. But I want to move a little bit further looking at verse number seven i believe it is uh, and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses where they eat pastor v i want to hand over to you but this is a beautiful picture of the provision that god made through a lamb who was a representation of Jesus Christ because this lamb was innocent blemish free it was thank you ma'am it was like many women today with uh, makeup <laughs> blemish free Jesus is far superior than that Amen. blemish free and they needed to shed innocent blood that's what it was. They needed to shed innocent blood, take the blood and sprinkle it on the doorposts and the lintels and be inside so that they would pr be protected from the death plague mm. that would pass. Mm. Isn't that wonderful, Pastor V, the provision that God has made? Yeah. And we need to be very mindful that that has to be very much the experience of every family on earth. Absolutely. So, Pastor Rodney, you know, Passover and resurrection is so beautifully aligned. Mm -hmm. Without each other, without the Passover, we cannot have resurrection. So it is absolutely beautifully aligned. And Let's go back to the temples, uh, Pastor Rodney. Mm -hmm. So w when God asked for, or, or when people needed to bring sacrifices, they normally went to a temple mm -hmm. or they went to a tabernacle and, and, and only the, the holiest of holiest people can, could go into this temple. They could go into this tabernacle and they could uh, you know, uh, uh, they could present, they, what, they, they, they sacrifice, and, and, and they, were, they had to be an altar, okay? So, so they presented their sacrifices at an altar. And here Jesus is saying to you, put the, bl the blood, sprinkle the blood on your doorposts. And, and Pastor Rodney, he was saying, when I was reading this, it was so beautiful. Jesus is saying to us, make your home an altar. He's, he's taken away all of that. He's taken away that you bring your, your sacrifice to a temple, bring your sacrifice to a tabernacle. He's telling you, sprinkle the blood on the doorpost and your home becomes the holiest of holiest. And the death angel will pass your home Beautiful. This this is just this I see, Pastor Rodney. I see God's beautiful heart in all of this. He he. Every time that I sit and I go into God's Word, and as I said at the beginning of the program, the Holy Spirit reveals the Son, and it is impossible for you, wherever you are in the world, to experience God and the love of God if you don't even have that beautiful connection with the Holy Spirit. And when I saw this, I saw the beautiful, the beautiful Jesus wanting our homes to be an altar, that the 
death angel will pass over because they see the blood because right now we have the blood of Jesus, family of God. We have something greater and more significant than sacrifices of the lamb. We have the precious blood of Jesus in our homes. We have it in our cars. We have it all over. We need to recognize this gift that God has left us, Pastor Rodney. When he hung on that cross, when he hung on that cross and he says, this is what he's left us. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And that's just not a song in your homes. There is power in the blood of Jesus. And you have to understand it. You need to understand what we have here. The precious, yes. the precious blood of Jesus. Yes. We have it and it is free to all of you. He has given it freely to all of you. So understand what we have, Pastor oh, Rodney. Yeah. You know, you just trigger so many thoughts that I mean, uh, going through as I was in preparation and we were preparing independently. And thank you for speaking about an altar. Because I believe that when the Lord said the title of the, today's program is A Lamb for Every Household, a sacrifice has to be on an altar. You know, Pastor V so beautifully positioned it to us today that the blood had to be sprinkled you know with a branch they would dip it and they would sprinkle it on the doorposts the two doorposts on the side and the lintel and I quickly saw a picture of Jesus as you said it Jesus Christ nailed to a wooden cross you can very well make a cross out of the doorpost and the lintel you can very easily make a cross and I just saw with a beautiful revelation that the sprinkling of the blood of the lamb the innocent one on the doorpost and the lintel reminds me of Jesus and his blood that was sprinkled all over Amen. the wooden cross that he carried for you. He was innocent. Amen. He was innocent, yet he was substituted for you. Amen. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for Jesus Christ, a lamb without blemish, yes. perfect one, sinless one. We needed to go and die. But God said, I'm sending Jesus, yeah. the perfect one. Yes. No one else was able to have a solution to die for sin. It could only be one who had no sin yeah. to take on the sin. So thank you, women of God, for bring, bringing through that beautiful uh, uh, truth of an altar in every home. So that brings us to the first beautiful point that came across. A lamb for a household would significantly imply that you need to have an altar mm. in your house. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, many years going to Christian homes, you must have a crucifix of Jesus either in a frame or something that would remind the family or remind visitors that this house is a Christian home. I used to be in homes where, uh, you know, uncles of mine that had smoked at the time would visit as a family, and the moment the head of that home walked in, he would say, no smoking. In fact, one of my uncles, he's late now many years, never went back to that home. I'm not, I'm not saying that you're a sinner if you smoke. I'm just giving you, giving you the, the, the sanctification of that home. We need to have our homes that are sanctified. You know, a lamb for a household. Sometimes you find, I've been praying about this, you find that a woman is strong with her children, but the husband is non-existent. Or if he is there, he's not into the things of God. I know I, I counsel many families here in AMI, and I realize that a godly husband is non-existent. I am praying today, by the mercies of God, yes. that we will have strong homes to represent what Jesus Christ wanted, what God had asked 
many, many years ago, 6,000 years ago, in this time that we're speaking, a lamb for a household, and then bring your neighbors in. Another aspect of reaching out to your neighbors as an evangelistic outreach tool. We are a church that believes in outreach and evangelism. But that is another topic for another day, but it's interwoven. But I want to just quickly, we have quite a bit of time left. I want to now fast track and take us to exactly why my spirit went to a lamb for a household. There was this walk. Uh, Pastor Kennedy and Bishop Shepherd alluded to it on Monday. And I just want to build on that as we go to the book of Luke chapter 24 verses 25, 26, and 27. You know, family, Pastor V, Jesus Christ had come. He had finished his work. It is finished when he was on the cross. But he still did a few significant things after his resurrection to really make sure that the ones that he had entrusted this gospel of his death and resurrection to would get exactly what he wanted. Which brings us to Luke chapter 24, the road to Emmaus. We take it from, I'm going to go right there with you in your Bibles to Luke. Yes, we are in chapter 24. Pastor B, you want to give us a context quickly of what happened here in Luke chapter 24. We were talking about it uh, and you were, kept on asking me, but who is this and who is that and why did Jesus go there? Oh. Pastor V. So, so, family of God, it was, it was a funny story and it just gives you uh, a, a little inkling that they've got, got a sense of humor because when Cleopas and the other disciple was, was walking to, uh, to Emmaus, it was Resurrection Sunday, okay? So they knew, they knew because because Jesus told them before that this is what I have to do. I am going to be crucified, but I'm going to be, I will rise again on the third day. And here Cleopas is walking. He's so oblivious to what is going on around him. And he, he's so confused. He's so confused because, and he says, this is the third day, but... And he, he was very well aware of, of what the disciples have told him, that the ladies had come back and the tomb was empty and Jesus was not there. But the penny didn't drop. He, he, didn't, he, he didn't put it all together and the penny didn't drop for him. So, so, so that was just, it was, it was really, can you imagine Jesus having a little giggle and joining them on the road to, to Emmaus and saying, you know, I, I told you that this was going to happen. And, and now you're still confused. You don't know who I am. You don't know where I am. You don't know anything. What's up with that? I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's like telling a little child uh, that this is what is going to happen. But this, these were adults. I mean, you, you're going to have to understand this. And, and yet they didn't. They didn't comprehend what Jesus was trying to tell them when he was with them. He, yeah. They didn't understand that. They didn't grasp it totally. How, how, how do people get to a place of, I mean, they had Jesus Christ with them in the day. They were followers of Jesus. They were following him. They knew of the miracles, they knew everything that he was doing. But how do, they, how do you get to a point where you do not, uh, it, it doesn't click that everything that was happening was as it was recorded. You so, get so dispirited, you get so disillusioned, you get confused, you don't know, yet it's clear to everybody else. So, so, Pastor Rodney, I can, I, can, I can only speak for myself. When I see things like this happening, when I know, family of God, we need to take our mind out of the, the whole equation. Because when our mind thinks about the logistics, about this and that, 
this is me. I'm talking about me. This is how I understand God's work. And we, we, must, never, we must never understand God's work through the world. Okay? God's work and God's, God's intention for his people comes through the word, through his word. It is never done through the world. And we need to take the world out of the picture. So with me, when I don't understand something, Pastor Rodney, I take my mind out of it. I think with my heart. And that is what, that is what Cleopas should have done. I think with my heart. And then, and then Jesus re reveals him to me. And that is why it's so beautiful when we, when we have the Holy Spirit and we have the relationship with the Holy Spirit. And then when we understand it, he allows us, family of God, he allows us to understand it because we are, we are spirit. Pastor Rodney, we are spirit. Yes. And, and, and sometimes we think we're too clever. And as much as we, 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 we I, 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 love, I love the fact that God made us so brilliant. I love the fact that he made us thinking individuals. I love the fact that he, he makes us, he, he made us into people that can do things. But family of God, when it comes to God's word, word and God's works, you take your mind out of all of this and you think and you, 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 you do everything in your heart. So when you see people in, in our, our church get up from the wheelchair, your mind will think to yourself, now is this really possible? Is this really going to happen? But when you take your mind out of of, of the whole situation and you understand that God said I will open the blind eyes and I will raise people from the from the wheelchairs because this is my name I will be the head and not the tail when you take your mind out of that and you you, you, you discover life through God's word family of God it becomes excellent it becomes beautiful and and in my opinion clear past should have should have Stop thinking about the logistics of all of this. But don't be too hard on Cleopas, <laughs> Pastor V. You know, it was Cleopas and another disciple because yes. on the road to Emmaus, we know that there were two. Yes. They were quite overwhelmed. It, listen, it's overwhelming. This was history in the making. This was their master, their Lord that went to the cross. And it was only given to them by a message that he's not in the tomb, he's risen. He appeared to others, but he didn't appear to me. But, you know, one of the things that I, I, I see here, Pastor V, is Jesus teaching us because, you know, everything that we see in the Word of God from Genesis through to Revelation relates to the Lamb of God. Yes. Think about it. You're reading Scripture. I mean, you saw it in Exodus a lamb for a household, and in the book of Revelation, the Lamb of God, the one who sits on the throne. The central theme that runs throughout the entire Bible has to do with redemption and salvation. And it's the blood that runs right through from Genesis through to Revelation. So here was Cleopas and his disciple, uh, he, his partner, whoever that was, theologians would discuss, but there were two of them. Now, they were not part of, Pastor V, they were not part of the 12 disciples, the inn. But nevertheless, they were disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what I learned from here, family of God, and this is where I want to bring us in to a tool for evangelism and a strategy. Jesus broke in to their conversation whilst they were walking very disillusioned very dispirited very confused by the events of what happened it was a seven mile journey about just over 11 kilometers and they were on their way back home they had come there uh, for jewish feasts and they had come there for the passover which we alluded to in the book of exodus and now they're going back Imagine if Jesus, Pastor V, didn't break into that conversation. They were responsible people from a village. How would they have carried the message of 
what Jesus told them before he went to the cross. Gosh, they would they, have been so despondent. They would have been despondent and confused. But here you see Jesus. He had raised up his 12. He had spoken to them. And yes, there was Thomas who doubted. There was Peter who denied him. There was Judas who betrayed him with a kiss. But then after his resurrection, he appears to Mary Magdalene. We've been through that on the rise of the prophetic last week. And now they were the disciples who were not part of the 12 and Jesus appears to them. He breaks into their conversation by, in a very polite way, and asks, because everybody was up and down walking between Jerusalem and Emmaus and the, 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 the surrounding uh, villages. And here was Jesus asks them, you know, what are you talking about? Why are you so sad? Because he could see their countenance had fallen. And they asked him, but how, are you the only one? Are you a stranger in Jerusalem that you don't know the events? And he asked, what events? And they had given their entire understanding of everything that they had known from the time they were little. What do you know from the time you were little until now? I ask you the question. What do you know of your Christian experience? What do you know of Jesus? What do you know of spiritual things up to this point? Is there any doubt? Is there any confusion? Here was Cleopas and the other disciple. They were in the presence of Jesus. They didn't know it because their eyes were restrained. And Jesus then breaks into that conversation, a tool for evangelism. And he said, oh foolish ones, now please don't use that line because it wasn't written in English. Jesus spoke about it in the context of you, you don't really understand it fully. So please, when you speak into a new disciple, a new family, don't say how foolish can you be? <laughs> Not to, no, no, please refrain. Okay, I caution you. But Jesus spoke, oh foolish ones and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Now Jesus is stepping in to give them a, a history lesson of his life story. And that's what the word says. Verse 26. Ought not Christ, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So he's saying to them, guys, if you had paid attention yeah. to what the prophets had written, yeah. you would have known that this was inevitable. Mm. You wouldn't be so dispirited. You wouldn't be so confused because you'll know that, listen, I heard that it rose again. They told me that the tomb is empty. I believe it. And I know that Jesus Christ is alive somewhere. Amen. And I know that he's going to do as he has promised. But they were so consumed by the emotional upheaval. In the area of their soul, your spirit needs to come alive. Amen. As Pastor V says, get the mind out of the way yeah. and activate your spirit. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory. And verse 27, I love this. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. I just want to read a few of those portions of scripture and I hand over to you, Pastor V. Just looking at how Jesus himself had to make sure that the ones whom he had entrusted to take the truth of his word gets the right message, gets the memo. And very quickly, Isaiah chapter 9, because it says, uh, we, we, we went through Exodus. I won't go to Exodus again because it says, beginning at Moses. Okay, you can keep that up there. But beginning at Moses, we read about the Passover lamb. That is Jesus Christ himself. Protection that comes from this, the blood on the doorposts and the lintels. Referring to Jesus. Then the prophet Isaiah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and all that list, the Prince of Peace. 
written in the scriptures by the prophet. And also because they were concerned about governance. Because they said to Jesus, they didn't know it was him, but they said to him, we were hoping that this man would free us from the Roman oppression. <laughs> this man <laughs> would free us. Of the increase of his government and peace, there'll be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. And then that was as Isaiah. Then if you read Isaiah chapter 53, Isaiah 9 speaks about the, 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 the birth of Jesus. Isaiah 53 speaks largely about exactly what they just experienced. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment or the chastisement for our peace was upon him. Amen. And the very next verse, uh, the last part of that verse says, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. Jesus is now speaking to them about what's in the scriptures that they missed. Yeah. Uh, Pastor V, how many times people miss the prophetic word? It's right there. Is it because they don't take time to read? Or because is it because they rely on the opinions of others that they take it for Pastor, gospel? Pastor Rodney, it, that person, and I hope that person is not you, that person does not have a relationship with God. You need to have your own relationship with God. We have this amazing opportunity that every time we sit here, we need to be in the Word of God more than ever. But when we are not on the rise of the prophetic, we're still in the Word of God because our Father is always, always just downloading uh, 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 scriptures and prophetic words and voices in our minds. So we are completely, we have a relationship with God. And, and Pastor Rodney, when, when Jesus eventually revealed himself to clear pass, and the disciple. And I see the you don't want to talk about the other one. And the disciple. <laughs> Cleopas's, um, his, 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 uh, you know, his despair turned to hope. Hallelujah. He, he, he needed, he needed, he, he needed this reassurance and his, his ignorance turned to such knowledge enlightenment. and enlightenment and, and his despair of, of who this, this, this Jesus was, was, was reestablished. And, and, and how many of you are there when you are going through little things and you're going through a divorce and you're going through things, you, you forget about how, how important it is to get closer and closer and closer to God, how important it is for us to understand it. So family of God, if you take anything from this, know that our Jesus, he was crucified as our Passover lamb. Amen. He was crucified. He was crucified as our blemish-free, uh, untainted lamb. But three days later, he rose as our resurrected Lord and Savior. He is alive. These are not words. He is alive. When you, when you get closer and closer and closer and you know that he's there, he becomes tangible. His presence will fill your home with his, his joy and his love. Allow yourself to get to this place and take away what the world says to you about what God is. Feel God with your heart experience his love with your heart because that's who we are we are made in his image and we experience we experience things the way he does so family of god if you are new if you're a new believer you need to start experiencing jesus experiencing his word his living word differently and i hope this reaches your heart today Hallelujah. And you know, everything that they needed to know mm. that Jesus had just reiterated and reminded them of was in the law, was yes. in the scriptures. And everything that you need to know about your Jesus yes. is in the scriptures. It is right here. I just love the fact that we can learn from one of the things we learned from this road to Emmaus. Jesus had no other reason 
to go to Emmaus. He was the resurrected immortal savior. He was on his way back to take his rightful place in heaven, but he still had a few things that he needed to do. And, you know, it was so important that he had to remind Cleopas and the disciple that, listen, everything that you need to know is already contained Hallelujah. in the Word. Hallelujah. But I just love the part that says, you know, when they sat to have a meal because they went and Jesus, you know, Jesus is also, he acted quite a bit, he acted and he was going somewhere else, but he waited to be invited. <laughs> Would you invite Jesus in? He wants to be invited like he invited himself to Zacchaeus' home. And, 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 and they said, please, the night, you know, it's quite late, come and have a meal with us, stay with us. And I love it in Luke 24, further down it says, and they knew it was Jesus by the breaking of bread. Amen. The way he broke bread, which means that they were with him many times when they had fellowship. We're not talking about communion, but just in the way that he did things. And then boom, once they knew this was Jesus, his assignment was done and he left. But one of the things that he really I really get from this family of God and Pastor V is that we need to have a holistic understanding of Jesus Christ. Jesus is in the Old Testament revealed in the New. Yeah. You want to witness and be an effective witness for Jesus Christ? Start reading this word. Don't be shy to open the book of Hosea because Hosea was told to marry a prostitute showing the mercy of God. Don't be shy to read the book of Isaiah. The prophetic, I love the prophet Isaiah, speaks of the birth and the resurrection of Jesus. Don't be shy to read the book of Psalms. Many Messianic Psalms are written specifically about the cross and Jesus. Not a bone of his shall be broken. Specific things. Don't learn it from any other source. Learn it from your ministry, from your spiritual father, and learn it and get the revelation of it by reading the Word. You need to have a holistic understanding of your Jesus. Do you have a holistic understanding of your Jesus? A lamb for every household. It means inevitably, it means that there has to be an altar in every household. And like it was back in the day, Moses... When it came to the the Ten Commandments and the laws, the instruction was, write it, you know, on the frontlets of your forehead. Don't let it depart from there. Joshua said to the children of Israel, you know, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He took charge as a man in the, amongst the nation of Israel. Even when they crossed over the river Jordan, you know, the priests were crossed over with the Ark of the Covenant and uh, every male representing a household had to take a boulder from the midst of the Jordan and keep it in their dwelling place as a talking point so that when their children ask, it is recorded in Scripture, what is that? You will tell them what God did for them, how He brought them miraculously across the Jordan and how with their forefathers he brought them miraculously across the Red Sea. A lamb for every household. Would you erect your altar? Would you stand together as a family? If you are a man and you say, I don't have the skills, it is okay. The Holy Spirit is your greatest teacher. Just be available. Every man right now as I close in one minute, Every head of your household, would you just lift up your hands with me? I just feel I want to lead you in a prayer. As we close in the next minute, a lamb for every household. God expects you as the priest in your home to lead your family. Say this after me. Lord Jesus, you are the Passover lamb. I commit today to leading my family 
in the way that you have asked me to be led, to lead them. Lord, I commit myself today as a man in my home. I commit myself today totally Hallelujah. sold out to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you said that prayer, you could have said it in any other way. You can still take that further. God is raising you up and he's making sure that just as he met with the disciple and Cleopas, who were not part of the 12, he's meeting with you. Hallelujah. And he spoke to you today to lead your family and to make sure that you have representation all over. Remove the idols. Remove the pop idol posters from all over your teenagers' rooms. Put a picture of Jesus Christ. Build an altar Hallelujah. and be a witness. And remember, I say one more thing as I close. Include your neighbors that do not know Christ. Reach out and the Lord indeed will bless you. Well, Pastor V, Amen. it's been a great joy just rushing through what I believe Absolutely. Uh, we needed more time for. But thank you so much for Absolutely. sharing that. Absolutely. And don't forget, let's pray 10 to 11 Central African time. And we will see you tonight with our Father, Apostle Alf Lucal on Let's Pray. See you later. Shalom. God bless you. Thank you for tuning into our broadcast. We trust that you've been blessed. For more information and resources, visit our website at www.alleluiaministries.com. For our prayer line, you may call the numbers on your screen. Tune into our next broadcast. Stay blessed.